does God meet you in the little things? Does he bring into your life moments where no one else knows anything about what you were thinking or what you might have done in a given situation, but that suddenly there's this connection that you go, oh, it was the Lord. And you realize that God has spoken or done something that no one else except you could understand that only God, only He as Father, looking down from heaven, could have known what was in your heart and thoughts, even in your mind, as you suddenly discovered that, wow, you know, I was just thinking about that. And bingo, there it was. The Lord brought it into your life, that moment in time. Some people say that there's a connection between a husband and a wife that as they live together a certain amount of time, one can think something and the other one will finish the thought. One could start to say something and the other will say it. There's more to that than what meets the eye. A lot of times people say, well, that's just because, you know, it's a habit. They, they know what the other person is like. Let me tell you something about me and my wife. There are times where I can sit here and I think, you know, Lord, like this morning, I'll think it and I'll say, you know, Lord, man, I just, I feel like Chinese food. And now that would be a shock to my wife because most of the time, as of late, I don't really eat Chinese food. And yet, I'll be, if I think about it today, I was in my mind tonight for some reason she would go oh you know I just had this sudden urge to stop by and pick up a, a plate of Chinese food and she'll bring it home and when it's the exception as opposed to the rule you know it's God because only God could know that I was thinking that thought only his Holy Spirit could take that thought and plant it in my wife's mind and cause her to bring home Chinese food from work or from on her way from home from work. All my life, there has always been God meeting me in those little things, in the very things you don't think about, the things that surprise you, the things that God has in store today for you to see that he is involved in your life. Watch for them. You see, as the watchman watches for the day and watches in case that the enemy come and he stands on his wall, so too you were called by God to watch for him meeting you. Because Jesus over Jerusalem wept because they did not recognize the hour of their visitation. My mind, when God brought that scripture to me, in my early walk as a born again Christian, when I first knew the presence of God in my life, walking in the Spirit and being able to say, hey, you know what? It is possible to do that throughout your whole entire day, to walk in the presence of God. Now, when I was studying that type of environment, though I don't do it now as much as I may have at that moment in time, God showed me that in everything, he can be seen moving. He can be known arranging. He can be unveiled doing in your life every moment of your day. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit would say to you in that moment. Because it's not always getting your favorite dinner. It can be little things or big things, you know, like my hummingbird is now hidden wherever he goes in the winter. <laughs> or the fall, but it could be things like something, a sudden phone call out of the blue. With bad news, you think that possibly a loved one passed away. And yet maybe passing away isn't such a bad thing. And that you discover in time that it was a good thing for it separated maybe a loved one from that person so that that loved one would grow up in the Lord become mature. God is about invading your life, revealing himself to you in a personal and intimate way so that 
the words of Jesus would come true. That not only when he stood at the door and knocked, would you open the door, but that literally, physically, in a very personal way, he and his father would come and fellowship with you. He would come and reveal himself to you. He would be made known to you as you have never known him before in your life. As you become born again from above by his spirit, as you become one with God, as you daily look to see where it is that God will meet you today. It's not just in the word as we read it. It's not just in the circumstances of life, but it's in the reality of stepping out of this dimension, so to speak, of the physical world and being able to see him in the spiritual reality that he is. For God loves you. The Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep your foot from being taken. Surely the wrath of man shall praise you. The remainder of wrath thou shalt restrain. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water he turneth whithersoever he will. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say, more than they that watch for the morning. Almost assuredly, as we watch today, this day, for the morning to come. I say, more than they that watch for the morning, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all of my fears. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before you, and shall say, Destroy them. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? When you look to the salvation of the Lord, even as I watch the wind blowing through the trees and the clouds being chased by the least of these things that God can do, and the sun beginning to rise over the mountains in the east. <laughs> For surely it's from the east that the sun rises and sets in the west. I think of all that God has done and that how he has always been my salvation. That I didn't turn to being rescued by man, even though God can use man to rescue you. I didn't turn to the government to provide for my needs, though God can use governments to provide your needs. But rather, though I suffered at times what seemed to be needlessly to some, I turned to the Lord to see if his promises were true. I turned always to my God, not wanting to let man do something that I wanted God to prove he could do. And when I did, <laughs> oh, it was a challenge. Oh, boy, was it. And though I suffered at times, God has always been my refuge and my strength and my very present help in time of need. And I proved that not only is God real, but he is so personal, it will blow your mind. Consolation in Jesus, comfort of love and fellowship with the Spirit. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, but continueth not. My flesh and my heart fails, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. The Father shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Blessed be God even the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them with which are in tr any trouble by the comfort with which ourselves are comforted by God. <coughs> when you find yourself in times of trouble, it isn't Mother Mary that comes to you. It's Jesus by his Holy Spirit. And how he comforts you is the reason why he would have you to comfort others, not to condemn them, but to bless them. Not with, <laughs> quote a scripture, run like crazy away from that person, but to share the feelings that you had at the moment that God delivered you, and to recognize that the same way that he's done for you, 
He wants to do with others. Not by you necessarily always being there to meet their need, but by you sharing how you were comforted by Jesus. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Death is never meant to be anything to be feared, but to be expected and looked forward to. For surely as God has provided so great a salvation in his Son, and raised him from the dead, likewise he'll do the same with us, because we trust in him. As he's promised and revealed himself in daily in our life, so too he will reveal himself in our death to prove to us that it was just passing through, going from one reality into his presence, that we will be there with God, and that Jesus himself will <laughs> open his hands, as it were, to show us many of our loved ones that are saved, that have been saved, that are waiting for us to come home to be with him. I don't fear death. I never have. Though I did when it first confronted me, God was there. And when he spoke to me and gave me hope and confidence in the day of my fear, I passed through and recognized that with death there is no sting. And with life there is a joy everlasting to know that because of the same spirit that came into us, God will bring us by that spirit to himself. And from that moment on, we will live in eternity, discovering things we never knew God had prepared for us. To see, to experience, to know, to enjoy, and to be a part of in ages to ages to ages, throughout eternity, different ages of life that God is bringing us because he created us to have fellowship with him, to discover him in our day today to walk with him today, even as you're doing right now, whether you see him or not, he sees you.